In previous videos, we've talked a ton about maximizing a pitcher's arsenal in order to get the best results on the field with what they've got. Why should a pitcher throw their fastball up in the zone or down in the zone? When we've talked about up in the zone, we've relied on several different items over the lifespan of this channel. First, it was high spin rate, which was later replaced by above average power units. And most recently, we talked about effective velocity. And all of this was just the opposite for pitchers who will see the best results pitching low in the zone. But another challenger has entered the ring, and this statistic is called vertical approach angle. What is it, how can it be applied, and why does it matter? All of that and more coming up in today's video. Welcome to Simple Sabermetrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So what is vertical approach angle? It's a pretty easy to understand stat. It measures the angle that each pitch crosses home plate at. You can think of it as the opposite of launch angle. It measures how steep or flat each pitch was. Let me show you an example. If a pitch was thrown off the mound at a zero degree vertical approach angle, it would be traveling parallel to the ground just like this, and most likely would soar right over the batter's head straight to the backstop since the pitchers are standing on an elevated surface when they're throwing, aka the mound. Variations from the zero mark can be affected by several different variables, the first being the pitch location. If you throw a fastball at the top of the zone, you can see that it will slightly differ from our original line. We will say this pitch has a negative four degree vertical approach angle. However, that same pitch thrown towards the bottom of the zone would have a much steeper plane. In this example, let's say it's around negative seven degrees. You'll notice that this number is always going to be negative, and that's because pitchers are throwing downwards towards the zone. But that's only one way that this number can be altered. The second is going to be pitch type. You can see here if you were to throw a curveball, which is known for breaking downwards at a much steeper angle than any fastball, how much different this makes our reading. We went from negative 4 degrees in the first example to negative 15 throwing a breaking ball. Because of this, for the rest of the video, we will be focusing on how vertical approach angle can be used to improve a pitcher's fastball performance against hitters. Our last point here that can affect our pitcher's vertical approach angle will be that pitcher's release point. Of course, this isn't something that can be easily manipulated, and this is one of the strongest indicators of what each pitcher's vertical approach angle will be, so you should think of this statistic similar to that of spin rate. Each pitcher's vertical approach angle is what it is. If one pitcher releases a fastball with all of the same metrics, speed, spin, etc., from a slightly higher release point, you can see how this affects our vertical approach angle. This is our first release variable that you can look at. The second is going to be how far down the mound or away from the front of the rubber each pitch was released. This has a slightly lesser effect, but you can see a similar result to our previous example. This variable will be labeled extension if you're looking at a TrackMan or StatCast CSV. So now that we have a good understanding of what vertical approach angle is, how can you use this for a pitcher's advantage? Well, to be put simply, if you were to look at the vertical approach angle of a pitcher's fastball, the flatter or closer to zero his average is, the more pitchers you should be throwing up in the zone. If a pitcher has a steeper vertical approach angle or a number less than negative five degrees, you'd want to live low in the zone. This is important to know because a pitcher's spin rate and induced vertical break may tell a different story. Depending on how the pitcher throws, he may actually need to throw lower in the zone even if he has a higher than average spin rate or bower units on his fastball. Typically, now is when I put up a chart to show you all what an excellent average or poor reading would be for this stat. But I wanted to give a special shout out to my managers over at the University of Iowa who put together an awesome article on this topic. A lot of the information I got for this video came from there. So definitely give it a read after this. On the chart on the left, you'll see what they deem as elite to awful vertical approach angle numbers on pitches thrown at the top of the zone. On the right, you'll see what that is for pitches at the bottom of the zone. And I think my biggest takeaway looking at this chart is that if you are in the negative five to negative six range here, you should do some work to get out of it. From my experience, it's much easier to get a guy to go steeper than negative five than it is to bring them flatter. Use this knowledge to your advantage. Circling back to the initial question of this segment, how can you use vertical approach angle? I would recommend first seeing where your pitchers rank and then informing them of what part of the zone they should attack and why. 
This article expands on this topic a ton if you'd like some more information. And as always, I've listed a few other links to articles such as one done by Ethan Moore a few weeks ago on the same topic as well. Relying on this metric is relatively new, so these are two great places for you to go and learn more information. If you want to read those, as always, links in the description down below. So finally, what are my main takeaways here? Well, even since creating this channel only a year and a half ago, the way I analyze a pitcher's performance has changed drastically. In the beginning, I truly relied on only spin rate, but as I learned new information, I moved on to the implementation of power units. And of course, the latest and greatest stat to inform us of how our pitcher should attack hitters is vertical approach angle. The moral of the story is that if you're not working to constantly improve, you're going to be left behind. The game is constantly changing, so you have to too. As crazy as it is, this stat isn't a new addition from a new piece of technology. It's just one teams are beginning to dive into now to find an edge on their competition. Regardless, it's easy to get into routines, but shaking that up and continuing that thirst for new knowledge and different ways to do things will pay dividends in the long run. The end goal is to win games and have a long successful career. It starts with doing it with the most up-to-date information you can find. So keep getting after it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.